Good morning, my name is Samantha Casey and this is my associate Tyler Turnbloom. We are students at Weber State University in Ogden, Utah. Today, we are going to tell you about a recent situation in social media ethics that involves the third most visited website of 2010. According to Article Alley, on February 15, 2005, three men launched a website that later took the world by storm long before Facebook. In November 2006, Google Inc. bought it for $1.65 billion. And only two years after being launched, the site held 7 billion visits a day. This website is called YouTube. It is a video sharing page where users can upload any kind of media which becomes available for anyone, user or not, to view. The site hosts a variety of media, including music videos, personal videos, even movies. It is estimated that 65,000 new videos are added daily from USA Today. So if YouTube were Hollywood, that would be enough material to release 600,000 new films to theaters each week. But on March 12, 2007, Viacom filed a lawsuit against YouTube for three direct copyright infringements. Viacom is a media conglomerate and they own lots of popular media properties like country music television, MTV, and Nickelodeon and they are worth $28 billion. It is estimated that, that YouTube will generate well below their needed $710 million in operating fees this year, according to CNN. And it wasn't until last year that the winner of this case was finally announced. On June 23, 2010, the Viacom vs. YouTube lawsuit came to a close with YouTube being the winner. Now, as Semi stated previously, there were three main infringements that were brought forth in the Viacom vs. YouTube lawsuit. The first infringement was reproduction. Now basically reproduction encompasses any material that is rebroadcast through any source without the consent of the company. An example of this is to display the show Modern Family without first obtaining permission from ABC or Disney. The second infringement was public reproduction. Now this includes unauthorized broadcasting of music without consent of the, without consent of the artist or the musician's um, record label company. Now, an example of this is to show the singer Taylor Swift's music video, Teardrops on My Guitar, without obtaining permission from Taylor Swift or Big Machine Records beforehand. And the third infringement was public display. Now, an infringement on public display would be to display a copy of literary, musical, dramatical, choreographical, or pictorial works without permission from the owner. An example of this is to display a copyright video of hip-hop choreographer such as Shane Spark without permission from him first. Now there's two main issues that uh, YouTube faces with being allowed to broadcast these materials. The first is that viewers can get onto YouTube and change the format of videos posted on YouTube to an MP3 format and download music illegally. And second is that Viacom was not receiving any revenue from shows being broadcast through YouTube. The ethical dimensions of this lawsuit have had a big impact on the relationship between YouTube and its customers. The viewers, the users, even the sponsors. The biggest dilemma the company faces besides copyright infringement is inappropriate content. As reported by Kirkup James in the London paper, YouTube released this following statement, saying, We have strict rules on what's allowed, and include a direct link from every YouTube page to make this process of reporting inappropriate content as easy as possible for our users. Given the volume of material uploaded on our site, we think this is by far the most effective way to make sure that the tiny minority of videos that break the rules come down quickly. YouTube includes a terms of service which bans <laughs> defamation, pornography, or any kind of criminal conduct. The system that YouTube was talking about in their previous statement is known as flagging. Below each video as a flag as inappropriate button. And as reported directly from YouTube, we review flagged videos 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And in most cases, they are reviewed and acted upon in under an hour. Now, the other ethical dilemma that the, between the customer and the business is copyright infringement. In Section 512 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, it states, If the service provider satisfies the requirements of the DMCA and receives a proper notice of infringing material, the service provider must remove or disable access to the material. The DMCA stated that as long as YouTube is implementing its takedown notices and its flagging, it is the responsibility is on the offended company to make sure that their videos are completely removed from the site. 
As previously stated, the largest dilemma facing YouTube is copyright infringement. Now this affects the economy significantly due to the loss in revenue. Now in the year, two, in the year 1999, the total revenue of the music industry was $38.6 billion. Now this same year, the music sharing software Napster became increasingly popular. Now, you, now the music industry was able to take down Napster within the year, but they suffered a $7 billion loss in revenue throughout that year. Now for the next seven years, the music industry continued to build up revenue and increase their sales until the year 2008, where they began to decline again. Now since the purchase of YouTube in 2006, it became the most advertised and visited sites in the world. Now between 2006 to 2008, it over tripled its traffic to its website and had over 7 billion video views a day. Of those 7 billion video views, the most popular were music videos. An example of the popularity of these music videos is singer and songwriter Lady Gaga. Since her debut in 2009, she has had over 1,800,000,000 views of her videos. Now if we took only a quarter of 1% of those videos and had them downloaded illegally through an MP3, a YouTube to MP3 music converter, that would result in over $4,500,000 lost in revenue, and that's just from one artist. If we took the top three artists, which is Justin Bieber, Lady Gaga, and Beyonce, and only a quarter of 1% of those music videos that have been uploaded since 2009 and they were downloaded illegally, it result in over $18 million lost in revenue. So after reviewing the ethics of this case, our team's position is, despite the controversies with YouTube, we feel they have behaved ethically as a company. The main problems they were facing were copyright infringement, inappropriate content, and illegal downloading. Now, YouTube still struggles with these problems, so we have a few solutions to remedy this and to help them. For copyright infringement, it is YouTube's responsibility to issue the takedown notices on the offending media. After the lawsuit, YouTube issued video IDs which check uploaded videos with a database of content to make sure that they are not violating the copyrights. But to avoid further confusion and lawsuits, we suggest continuous monitoring and public notification. Before YouTube, before a user is able to post on YouTube, we suggest that YouTube flash a pop-up of their terms of service and clearly state that if the video violates copyright, it will be immediately taken down by associates. For inappropriate content, <coughs> the only people that are able to flag the videos are registered users. So to remedy this, we suggest that YouTube allow all viewers to flag these videos and not just the registered users. And finally, for illegal downloading, YouTube is such a large website that the task to monitor this is enormous. We have considered this problem and a few solutions to remedy it. Now, although YouTube realizes that illegal downloading is happening, there is not much they can do. You see, illegal downloading is happening using a third-party software, and this does not have a program written to block it. If YouTube were able to write such a program, this would be the best solution. People are also downloading by typing in www.saveyoutube.com rest video address. And the only way to block this would be to block every single video on their website by beginning with that address. So as quoted by Keylot.com, if every online service provider was liable for anything any user did without its knowledge, there would be, it, the result would be very limited access to the internet. In conclusion, I would just like to reiterate some of the main points of our business ethics situation. In the year 2007, Viacom filed a lawsuit against YouTube that lasted for three years. After these three years, the lawsuit came to a con conclusion with YouTube being the winner. The two main infringements were public performance and inappropriate content. We believe that YouTube behaved, e behaved ethically throughout the situation, but that they should make changes to, to their current routine to lessen these problems. We believe that YouTube should continually monitor videos and display terms of service each time a viewer uploads a video. As well, we believe that YouTube should allow any visitor to flag videos as inappropriate, not just its subscribed users. We believe that if YouTube does this, it will not be only more beneficial to all other companies involved, but also to YouTube and its viewers. Thank you. Do you have any questions?